My name is Lachlan Giles, here shooting for MA1. Uh, we're going to show you some uh, concepts and just some things that I think are really important for having an effective guillotine choke, uh, when to go for it and also when to transition out into something else. So, first of all, uh, we want to make sure our original grip is good. So, one of the biggest, most common mistakes I see is that people try and reach all the way through to connect their hands together straight away. It's almost impossible when you go through to connect your hands together unless you've got an opponent that doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, because as soon as your first hand comes through, they're thinking about defending. So it's really, actually really important that your first hand just grabs the chin. Like that, yeah? And you want to make sure when you grab your chin that your, th like your thumb does come behind so you're on the neck. So we're not grabbing like like this, we're actually grabbing behind, like at the bottom of the, the chin, like that. I have to keep my elbow tight. I want to make it as hard as possible for Dan to strip my grips, yeah? So my hand's tight and my elbow's tight, like that. Give no space at all here. If I'm open like that and he reaches into that space, I've lost it straight away. Now, secondly, with my other hand coming in, because I do want to connect my hands eventually, with my other hand coming in, I don't want to give any space either. And it's, this is another mistake that a lot of people make. I've got the chin strap really good here. And when I get the chin strap also, I want to like make sure he's, he's like down near the side of my ribs, not in front of me like that. So I want to pull him out to the side there so I can really lock his head. Move forward and back with your head there. You should never really have a problem with people pulling their head out of your guillotine. Second hand coming in like this. If we change the angle. Second hand's coming through. If I leave this, if I just reach through, which might be the quickest way, intercept it and grab it, you can grab my wrist. As soon as it goes to my wrist, it's going to be very, very, very hard to finish. If, if I don't have both hands connected, the guillotine, in my opinion, is almost impossible to finish. So, where do I want to come from? What angle? Here, like this. I want to come next to my body and connect my hands like this with my elbow tight. So, grab my hand now as I go for it. There. So, we'll be fighting. So I kind of connect to my hands now. The difference is, he's trying to when I go close to my body, he's trying to claw in and actually get a good grip over the top. Here, he gets on top of it, he pushes it down easy. When it's in close, like so, I can wedge in and connect my hands like that. Now it's okay to pull my hands through a little deeper if you want, yeah, if you need to. So sometimes we just slightly adjust too far across. But that's probably another mistake that I see a lot. People think that their hand needs to be like that. You're not trying to choke them with the middle of your forearm, you're really trying to choke them with uh, just around where your thumb meets your wrist bone. Like so. So, grab the chin, this the second hand, sneaks through, and we connect like that. I keep my elbows tight, I give him no room to grab in and, and start to finish from there. Now, once I've got that, now I start to sit. Do not fall back until you've got good control of their head. So. Another very common mistake, you grab the chin or uh, you connect your hands but not properly yet and then they start falling down. That's when people pop their head out. You see people lose their head in the guillotine. That should never happen. You should always be right over the top of them with your armpit it's in your, by the side of your ribs and you've connected your hands. Now that everything's tight, uh, during that time, like if he's trying to fight and move me around, like I'm just basically trying to keep my balance here and, and trying to fight in until I get my grips. Now that I've connected here, I'm going to drop into my right hip, like that, and I'm going to sit down onto that side, like that. So I'm bringing his head down near the mat, he's probably going to tap in a moment, but my left leg will come over the top to stop him rolling. This is really important, because when he rolls to, some people are really good at this, no, no, not that way. One, this will stop him, yeah, this will stop him jumping, but two, roll to your, roll away that way. Yeah, some people will do this, and I actually lose, the more he turns into me now, the more I lose his neck. So I want to stop that. So my heel has to catch and roll, catch him as he rolls that way. I want my heel over the top. Now if he rolls, I should be able to use my heel to pull me with him. So go. Now I can finish from mouth. Um, last 
little detail when I actually finish the guillotine. It's usually more of like a cur like I'm curling into that side and pulling up like that. It's not I'm not trying to pull their head away from their body like that. And you'll see uh, that's a common mistake where people will hurt someone's neck uh, and not necessarily be choking them, but actually they might tap from a neck crank, um, which it shouldn't be a neck crank at all, really. Um, so if you curl in and squeeze, it should be much nicer. So we're here. I drop onto the hip, I swing my leg over, and I want to stop him rolling if I can. But if he does, I'll pull it. But that's okay now. Last little thing, you can put your elbow over the top to help, but you don't need to. I make sure I curl into that side and squeeze. My hands, I want to bring my forearm back and bend in, like so. Which works really well when I want to then put my chest behind his 